السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی ٹو دا لاسٹ لیکچر آف دا کورس آن برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ان دا ہوپ دیٹ وٹ ایور وی ہیو لرن سو فار اباؤٹ دا کورس از گوئنگ ٹو فائنڈ اٹس ایکسپریشن ان این افیکٹیو وے بائی وے آف دا برانڈ پلان آئی اسٹارٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ویری لیفٹ ان دا پریویس لیکچر یو ول ری کال آئی واز ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا brand analysis got the part of the, the planning process got the, when the time ran out so got the, let us pick up the threads got the, from there under got the brand analysis got the, was talking about products and uh, their variants and got the, talked about packaging got the side of uh, the products and their got the variants let us now talk about the, the next step that got the, you have to take and that is in terms of pricing pricing as got the, we all know very well by now got the, is based on got the two different models you can opt for either uh, a market based model or a cost based model depending upon your circumstances you have to make uh, the, the most optimal decision but what really is to be kept in mind is that uh, the pricing is the cornerstone of margins that uh, you are going to generate for the company but then at the same time you also have to be mindful of the value for money aspect or the proposition to your consumers. So therefore, a balance between the two has got to be maintained and based on those considerations, you can go for either cost-based or market-based. Do take uh, the competition into account and uh, do not uh, go for a price which is uh, exorbitant because uh, that will attract competition unnecessarily. So pricing, in other words, has got to be very effective and uh, the very practical and related to the positioning of the product. The next step that you have to take into consideration is uh, the advertising and promotions. When it comes to this area, we all know that uh, we've got to have an integrated campaign, which is uh, the part advertising, part promotions, and part all other tools, or a combination of a few tools that we have at our disposal. The basic idea is to create the, the optimal level of impact on our consumers so that we really can relate those impacts to the various stages and phases of the consumer response effect. And having said that, we have to be very sensitive to the phase the brand is passing through and design up a campaign accordingly. The next step um, uh, in the, the brand analysis area is the, the channel partners. So you have to uh, look for uh, the channel partners and uh, go for um, a channel structure uh, which is uh, best suited under your uh, circumstances. The, the basic objective is to achieve uh, the cost efficiencies and also at the same time uh, make sure that uh, your uh, system remains uh, customer friendly meaning it is very effective from the point of view of outreach and the convenience to your customers. Once you are clear about the channels, then you get on to the next area, which is the competitors. Now, here, what you really have to take into account is the potential threat which your competitive brands are going to offer. Take into consideration any Uh, possible uh, the big moves on part of your competitors that may disrupt your planning. The meaning all those moves which are not avoidable and uh, have to be uh, considered uh, in terms of um, staging a change, you must consider those because uh, that way you can preempt uh, the negative uh, developments that uh, might come up And if those come up, you've got to be prepared with some level of contingency plans. And you may have a strategy which talks about that contingency. Like, you know, if it happens like the following, then we should do that. So those kind of relationships between if and then, you should come up with. And the next step in the brand analysis is the control measures. You've got to... Uh, to take um, a certain uh, measures uh, if you think your brand is uh, going off course. In order for the brand to get back 
on course, what you're supposed to be doing is take some corrective actions. Now, how do you take uh, these corrective actions and uh, how you're going to uh, set the stage for uh, uh, correcting uh, those things which you can have uh, gone wrong with the help of um, certain brand measures and uh, you, you've got to undertake uh, the certain dynamics that uh, are going to provide you with the rightmost feedback about uh, your brand's movement so that you really can uh, respond to the changes uh, which are taking place in the market or in the absence of changes, if something has gone wrong uh, internally and uh, you've got to fix the situation, uh, you should do that from that point of view as well. And um, coming to, you know, talking about the brand dynamics, I think you know, your, uh, the knowledge of um, those measures should be you know, pretty much uh, fresh in your minds because uh, it wasn't very long ago that it talked about so many different measures on um, so many different strategic um, aspects and angles. Make sure that uh, you really have uh, a strategy in place uh, while you uh, analyze uh, your brand uh, in relation to uh, such measures. If you are uh, a large corporation, you've got to uh, going to make the whole process uh, very well structured and uh, very highly formalized, uh, talking about uh, the measures. If you are uh, a small company, then uh, all the efforts are going to revolve around the just about a few individuals, and uh, you can undertake this process uh, informally, uh, but then you have to uh, analyze the, uh, the brand situation and uh, they have to be prepared to uh, get into uh, such measures which provide you with the rightmost feedback. The last step as uh, the part of the, the brand analysis is uh, new developments. We have to uh, look at the brand from uh, so many uh, the different angles and uh, the, one of the important angles is uh, why is it that uh, the, so many companies have brands, uh, the more than one, the, within the same category? Well, it is all due to the competitive pressures which are of the different forms and shapes and of the different intensities. But what is important is that you've got to stay very alert to your competition and you've got to have the complete feedback from the mechanism of the brand's performance measurement. And it is only through these the two things that you are going to bring about changes uh, in uh, the positioning of the brand and uh, the hence go for uh, the variations in terms of new offerings and new entries. Um, you have to consider the, the drivers for change and of course when you are alert and uh, you have uh, the results of uh, the, the brand's performance, you are responsive to uh, those uh, the changes, the meaning those uh, the dominant forces that cause those changes and you bring into effect the key success factors and you put everything together and um, just get cracking. The, the challenge at uh, this juncture is uh, that you do not introduce those variations which uh, cannibalize your existing ones, meaning which do not really eat into the volumes that you already have. The, the beauty of um, this concept is that you eat into uh, the competition and not into your own self. So be careful about uh, the segmentation and positioning and you will get all the answers toward the right most approach. Now talking about uh, the variations and talking about uh, the why companies have uh, the more than one brand uh, within the same category, let me tell you very briefly that generally in the market you have uh, three the major categories of uh, the brands the by your company and uh, the by your competitors. Uh, first is the, the premium brand. Now premium brand is the, the high quality with uh, the premium price and uh, that is the brand which must occupy the center stage in the marketplace. The second type is the, the flanking brand. Now this is a brand you see which flanks your premium brand if your premium brand is uh, threatened by uh, a competitor. You also can uh, get the PM to, uh, get the under certain circumstances if you think that uh, you have to have a flanking brand, but generally you do that 
in order to keep competition away. Whether you do that with a, you know, before competition has uh, set in or whether you do that after a competition has set in, the decision is yours. And uh, I think it is obvious that you should opt for the proactive approach and not reactive approach. This uh, flanker is uh, a brand which is a little uh, lower in price as compared to your uh, premium brand. And uh, this is the brand which offers a, a little different uh, set of uh, the benefits. So the level of benefits and uh, the pricing um, are different. If you refer to the illustration with which uh, I drew your attention toward in relation to the sandwiches, you will know um, what I'm talking about. And um, that is how you are really going to make um, realistic uh, decisions about uh, what uh, the brand uh, should be a flanking brand. The third uh, the category is the fighting brands. Now, fighting brand is uh, basically a fighter uh, which fights competition and uh, it fights competition head on. Uh, when uh, you plan to uh, introduce that kind of a brand, of course, the, the pricing point is uh, on a much lower side and the benefits that you offer um, have got to be the very the basic in nature because the idea is just to the fight competition um, at a ground which is away from the premium brand. The objective, again I would say, is to uh, safeguard your position for the premium brand because that brand is the one which must occupy the center stage and it has to be in the center of the defined market, meaning your target market. You should be very careful right from the outset about the, the market situation and uh, the define your brand accordingly, meaning that you should not be in a hurry just to create a the flanking brand or just to create a fighting brand because uh, you're not supposed to be stirring in you know, a competition um, out of its slumber. You know, if uh, the competition is not really bothering you, and um, things are uh, pretty peaceful in the, in the marketplace, you do not really have to create a situation where competitors start responding to you with uh, full ferocity. Uh, that is uh, not really prudent. The whole uh, planning process uh, will revolve around definition of the market and the brand because that will define the essence, identity, values, and position of the brand accordingly. So this is uh, all about the, the second uh, phase of uh, the planning process, which is uh, in itself known as uh, the planning process. So again, let me summarize. I talked about the first phase, which is about corporate strategy and brands, and uh, the second phase, which is the, the planning process. And while talking about the planning process, I basically have talked about all those concepts and all those elements of strategy that you could must consider while putting your plan together. Now, with this understanding in place, I would like to take you to the final step, which is the brand plan in itself. And I told you earlier, it is a long-term document. It is a template, which is um, an expression of uh, the total effort that you have carried out so far um, toward your strategic considerations. And strategic considerations starting with just two elements, meaning the brand essence and uh, the brand architecture uh, lead you into so many of the different concepts which you uh, studied before I started talking about the brand architecture and even after I was done with the brand architecture. So this is um, the, the document which is the final, final thing. And this is something about which uh, you can say at the start, Okay, fine. I have the complete understanding of um, the strategic elements and uh, I know uh, what are the considerations I have to um, undertake before proceeding with uh, my plan. Now I'm going to get down to the um, structured uh, the planning uh, form of the, uh, the whole thinking and I have to come up with a document which is going to serve the basis of um, all the execution which will take place not only on part of the 
company members, uh, meaning people within marketing and uh, your colleagues all over, but also the ad agencies and uh, the research agencies and any other companies involved into the promotional activities. So this document, in a very summarized way, records in a very structured manner your whole planning process. And this is uh, where I would uh, tell you things that you must take into account in the order I'm going to talk about, uh, preferably. But the choice is yours. Since uh, the brand plan is uh, your uh, strategic framework, you must understand, first of all, what a strategy is and what is the difference between a strategy and tactics. Now, this is not to uh, assume on my, on my part that uh, after having talked so much about strategies, you do not understand what a strategy is. No, this only is to bring home the point that brand plan is going to be a set of so many different strategies expressed in very uh, few sentences and uh, expressed in um, a form which is uh, very concise and yet very comprehensive. By going through the one strategy of two to three sentences, a reader must know what you are arriving at. And a reader must know what could have been the background of this strategy. So with that objective in mind, let me tell you that strategy is a long-term document that sets a course of action for the foreseeable future. That is just about it. It is a game plan that defines the means to achieve the real objective. Very simple. And tactics is execution. It is all about how you achieve your sales results uh, this year or carry out your campaign this year and the year after. So the reason I really want you to uh, make a distinction between a strategy and tactics is that you have got to be the very uh, concise and very to the point when you put down um, strategies as part of your strategic framework because after you're done with the brand plan, let me tell you, the next step which uh, is going to be very important on your part and uh, which I leave to your education and training and the comprehension so far is going to be all the details of the budgets. And uh, in other words, if you're talking about an uh, uh, advertising strategy, you have to have the, the executional side of it and the, you mention all the, like the media elements that you are going to take into account uh, in relation to the number of insertions and uh, the costs and so on and so forth. So that is something which uh, that doesn't really uh, call for any further uh, teaching on my part uh, when it comes to your um, imagination and uh, your expertise on that. Okay. Now, having understood the difference between the two, meaning the strategy and the tactics, let me also explain this distinction with the help of one example. I always like to make sure that you should have examples because, like they say, the one example is better than 100 reasons and explanations. Um, this is like an advertising campaign uh, getting to a point where your uh, consumers are getting bored. And uh, I think I they did talk about this example before also. Strategies never bore with your consumers. It is the tactics. So if you think that uh, there's got to be a little change in whatever you are communicating, without having to change the essence of that communication, what you should do is uh, to bring about a tactical change uh, while remaining uh, within the uh, same strategic framework. So that, I think, should explain the, the distinction between the two. And um, what I'm saying is tactics will change, but strategy still will remain the same. Until the point that uh, you really have to bring about a strategic change, something really has taken place in the market which uh, has created you know, a drastic change, you may have to change the strategy. And uh, when, do, when you change the strategy, you start the process all over again. Uh, there's not going to be the much difference. I mean, there's not going to be any difference when it comes to uh, the, all that we have been discussing for the past two lectures and um, also in this lecture. Written strategy. Every business 
large or small, consumer or industrial should have a written strategy. That goes without saying. Because a written strategy brings the whole marketing program into a very sharp focus. If you were to define your business and then come up with a strategy for that business, and you know what a strategy is all about, means to achieve your objectives, and you have to talk in two to three sentences, well, I tell you, it is not going to be easy. And this is not to say that you cannot do it. No, an average student or average person can do it. But uh, the objective is that when you do that, you have to look into the consistencies. When you start writing the statement of that strategy, you will see how many inconsistencies uh, that would have existed if the strategy was not expressed in a very well-structured form. Make no mistake that the whole strategy is concerned about your brand. And therefore, it cannot have parts which do not really fit into each other. They must fit like all the cogs fit, fit into a wheel. That is very important. It has to be a body which uh, has all the organic parts. Even one small, minute, foreign part is going to dis disturb the body and it will not remain organic. After uh, you have uh, talked about the strategy and uh, you have written the strategy in the form of a statement, which must not be more than two to three sentences, you, as a second step, start writing down your objectives. So in other words, as part of the brand plan, in a structured way, you have written your strategy as statement of strategy, as the starting point of the document, and the second point of the document is objectives. When I was talking about the, the process, in terms of the elements that you have to consider, I did talk about objectives, but I talked about objectives, you know, after having talked about so many other elements. So here, as part of the well-structured document, objective of um, the, the business or the, the marketing plan or the business plan has got to be number two point after you have written the statement of strategy. You talk about the numbers and the sales figures, the revenues, the, the market share, the rate of growth, and uh, also the margins. I mean, there's no harm talking about the, the financial the side of it. So you also talk about uh, the different ratios which you have uh, studied in your uh, the basic course on accounting and finance. Do not talk about those numbers which are not achievable. You see, the basic objective of uh, having your objective written down is that you must convince yourself whatever you're writing has to be achievable and has not to be something which uh, is not based on practicalities. Your figures should show you the increase which you are going to register year after year and your figures should show you the increase in the market share which you're going to register and so on and so forth. So having talked about all this, it really will accelerate your thinking about all those numbers which you should talk about and which really can make so many different people within the organization uh, responsible for their achievement. Objectives have got to be very clear. This is what we can summarize. Objectives have got to be measurable and objectives have got to be achievable. So this is uh, the, the summary of uh, the uh, objective the part of the, the brand plan because uh, objectives reflect the, your vision to get to the point where you're wanting to get. You know, here we are, and you know, here we want to go. So it is the objective which is going to talk about the growth gap and all those things. Think about all the factors that we talked about earlier. So you are done with the second uh, the point of the brand plan. And I will repeat, whatever business you are in, you have to start talking about your objective. And you must uh, the talk in terms of different sales, revenue, financial numbers. Next point is the need. You've got to define the need. Although uh, I talked about uh, this factor, I don't remember in uh, which lecture precisely, but uh, not in the very first lecture. But here, as uh, the part of the brand plan, you have to talk about the need after you have uh, put together your objectives. 
you must talk about talk about your product and brand in terms of its absolute necessity. And uh, you have to think about the question which the, the top management asked themselves. Uh, what is it that the market you know, will do if the brand did not exist? Well, if you have answered the question very convincingly, the, you certainly will you know, think to yourself, well, here is the need. It is um, very convincing and it is going to be fulfilled by introducing this brand. So you talk about the need and uh, you talk about that in terms of again, in terms of a strategy. And that strategy has to be expressed through a very concise statement uh, comprising of not more than two to three sentences. If you cannot really state the need very clearly in uh, those many the sentences, it means the need is not there. And if you still continue with the development of your brand, the brand is going to fail. It may sound like a uh, very emphatic statement, but uh, that's the way it is going to be. Give the need so many dimensions, like uh, how serious uh, is it, and uh, how unfelt is it, and uh, how long uh, is it going to stay like that, uh, if not uh, fulfilled, and uh, what is going to be the role of your brand in fulfilling that need. So these uh, are the things which you can dimensional, dimensionalize and uh, it bring uh, uh, a lot of uh, substance to the uh, need part of uh, your brand plan. Serious answers, as a matter of fact, to uh, all these questions uh, through which uh, you are going to uh, give uh, different dimensions to the need aspect are going to tell you uh, how consistent uh, you are in terms of uh, your consideration of all these strategic elements that you have uh, put together so far and uh, you will be astonished to know that uh, you will be uh, running into uh, a few inconsistencies and uh, when you reach that situation you will then start thinking about uh, the rightmost strategies or the changes you know which you will bring about your thoughts that uh, you uh, the must have had your, in your mind kind of preconceived thoughts. So my point is that uh, by having answers to all the questions, you are going to really make sure that uh, the consistencies um, between and among the so many uh, various strategic elements of the whole branding process are in place and they have uh, the very logical linkages and those linkages are going to lead you to making a very um, useful and a very uh, practical kind of uh, a plan. The more uh, clearly the you state the need, the greater the chances of uh, the being right onto your uh, the positioning and right onto summing up the uh, inner core of uh, the brand onto the point of positioning. The next point is uh, the source of uh, the volume. Uh, this section outlines the, where the volume will come from and uh, this obviously takes into account the, the size of the segment and uh, the, what size the, you think you're going to achieve and how. The, you talk about your uh, the customers uh, the, by two different ways, uh, the, by adding new customers and uh, the, by getting the, your existing customers to use more and uh, the, if you think that uh, the, your uh, the source is uh, the children between the ages of 6 to 15 years, then uh, that is going to be the source, uh, the primary source of volume and uh, any volume that uh, may come to the brand is going to be the secondary volume and you should talk about that also. Uh, if you're selling biscuits, the you and uh, there's a brand which really is meant uh, for uh, children between 6 and 15 that is the primary volume, you project that, you talk about the segment and then you also talk about those segments from where this volume will also flow into uh, the segment you are in. So that is going to be the incremental or uh, secondary the business uh, the coming to your brand. Be very clear and absolute about the source uh, because uh, that brings clarity about the growth of your brand and uh, if you are clear about the growth of brand your total vision about uh, all of the elements really falls into place 
The next step that uh, you have to take and uh, talk about in, as part of the, the brand plan is target audience. Now, this is going to be an extension of uh, what I've talked about, and uh, you have to talk very qualitatively in terms of uh, your segment or segments, uh, whatever you are covering, one segment or more than one segment, you have to talk about those in terms of uh, who your customers are and uh, why they buy and what they buy and where they buy and so on and so forth. This is uh, something which uh, is uh, going to provide you with complete knowledge of um, the elements that will form the model for the customer. And uh, this is uh, going to be the foundation of the customer model for which we talked so comprehensively in so many different lectures. So in other words, what I'm telling you is that starting with uh, the statement of strategy, uh, right down to this point of uh, the target audience, that you already have talked about all those points which will lay the foundation for the customer model that you must have in place in order for the strategies to work. And that goes without saying that the strategies which you're going to craft are going to be very much in line with the customer model, meaning they're going to flow out of this model. And this model has been based upon the essence of the brand. And that essence was based on the overall vision of the corporation. So I'm trying to relate everything with everything else so that you can build all those blocks and bring your thinking into a very proper perspective in terms of preparation of this plan. In other words, you now have uh, a section of the brand plan which is a beautiful reflection of the customer-based brand model. Let us proceed further. You now start talking about the strategies. The first strategy you're going to talk about is the marketing strategy. And like I told you, the no strategy should be more than like in a couple of lines or at the most, you know, three to four lines. Uh, limit yourself. Uh, do not get into uh, the verbosity because uh, clarity is uh, going to bring about that uh, conciseness and uh, that is the objective here. How you uh, talk about uh, this uh, the statement of strategy, I would like to explain that with the help of uh, a couple of examples and uh, then you will know how to state a strategy. Just suppose you are um, going to launch uh, a dress shirt uh, for... Um, for men, and uh, it is going to be you know, something you know, very specialized. Your strategy from that point of view you know, could be, now you're stating that strategy, and you say the basic thrust of the strategy is toward introduction of uh, the best tailored dress shirt of high quality fabric comparable with any imported brand at a premium price. So what you have done is that you have talked about the quality of the product that you are wanting to launch. That you have talked about the quality. You also have drawn a comparison and you're also talking about the price. And now just start thinking about all the elements that you have to put together in order to come up with um, the executional the part of this strategy. It, it speaks volumes. Now let me give uh, another example to you uh, from the juice market. But you happen to be uh, a manufacturer of juice and uh, you want to introduce a new product for uh, the children. And uh, that is the product which uh, is not very sour. Uh, children do not like anything which is not sweet. Okay? So from that point of view, your basic marketing strategy would be, you state like this. The basic marketing strategy is to introduce a juice with minimal traces of sourness at a competitive price. Here again, what you're doing is you're talking about your strategy of uh, bringing about a certain product. You're talking about the product character. Um, its characteristics automatically you know, come to mind and uh, you talk about the price also. And uh, again, you see this is an example of a strategy that uh, should lead you uh, toward um, so many different strategic avenues as to what is to be done here and what is to be done there. I will leave it to your imagination. I can come up with a few more examples, but for the shortage of time, let us move on. These are the statements of strategy which you have or which you, which you must keep in mind. And you must come up with your strategies wherever you are and whatever product you are dealing with, 
it by keeping in mind uh, the uh, success factors also and uh, the linkages uh, the, among uh, the, all the elements uh, that are uh, going to provide you with all the consistencies. So in other words, if you're talking of uh, a competitive price, uh, naturally you're talking about uh, the packaging, which has to be very practical, but and which should not be very, very expensive. Just one example. Maintain consistencies everywhere, and consistencies will come as long as you really can develop the right linkages. And the right linkages are going to be a function of the cross-functional uh, relationships. You will uh, not like to have a strategy uh, linked with uh, a factor uh, absolutely beyond your control. In other words, if you think of something very creative and uh, you think that uh, you really do not have the resources to give that a practical shape, uh, you must not talk about that because then you are living in uh, a paradise which doesn't belong to wise people. And you know what I'm saying. The next strategy is about positioning. You state this strategy again in just about a couple of sentences and uh, the statement of strategy deals with uh, how you really wish the, your customers the, should perceive the, your brand. So it is all about uh, the, your ability to create that perception the, which is very consistent with uh, the marketing strategy. You did talk about uh, the quality of the product and uh, the uh, comparisons and uh, the, the pricing, uh, the aspect of uh, the product. Here could you talk about what really is it which must be perceived on part of the consumers or by the consumers. So in terms of uh, the dress shirt, you can say that the dress shirt seeks to be perceived as the, the best crafted shirt on the local market. If you talk about uh, this positioning, uh, I believe this will uh, bring into sharp focus because so many different uh, consistent elements that you must consider. In terms of uh, the juice, you can state the strategy like that. I mean like the following, the juice seeks to be perceived by the target market as the best quality, the best priced and the least sour juice within the category. Now, when you make this statement that uh, it has to be perceived as the least sour, so you've got to do something about the characteristics of uh, the product. And uh, when you talk uh, about the quality, uh, which has to be second to none, again, you have to do something about that uh, while remaining within uh, very reasonable pricing limits. So these uh, the statements have got to be very consistent with the overall marketing strategy. And uh, these two are going to put together, are going to lay the foundation for other uh, strategies which you might call uh, associated sub-strategies. So in other words, the main, main two strategies are going to be the marketing strategy and the positioning strategy. And before you started talking about these strategies, you developed your uh, the customer model based on a few steps which you know by now very well. Let me explain uh, the one fact to you that uh, the strategies which I'm going to talk about, uh, though very briefly, are going to form uh, the many of uh, the, the brand plans the which uh, the you shall be having an opportunity to uh, work on. In other words, not all these strategies which uh, I'm going to talk about uh, are going to be part of every plan that you lay your hands on. And by the same token, there, uh, there must be some strategies with which uh, I may not be talking now, but which under your circumstances that you would like to incorporate as the part of the brand plan. The basic idea is to develop a framework which serves the purpose of um, a plan which can be adapted, which can be improved, and uh, which can be uh, adjusted uh, in light of the competitive pressures, and not pressures, rather competitive situations from time to time. Product strategy as the most important uh, associated sub-strategy as part of the uh, brand plan. You have to talk about the uh, strategically the fundamental elements of the product. So apart from the, the primary function of the product, you must mention all the promises it is going to deliver. The set of promises then should be translated into a contract that you think is consistent with the, your model and the marketing definition. When you talk about um, the, the product, you have to take into account the content, 
the, the package and the size and all other elements of the product. I don't really have to get into details because all other elements are automatically going to flow out of the marketing and positioning strategies if those are consistent. The next strategy is the, the packaging strategy. Uh, this basically is the, the domain of uh, the, the brand's identity and imagery and uh, the brand contract and uh, those kinds of things. So that you've got to be very consistent about uh, the graphics and uh, about the, the functional the aspect of uh, the product. Uh, functional in the sense that uh, if you are dealing with a product, as an example, which is uh, meant for uh, teenage with the market, you have to come up with a package which really fits well into a teenage uh, the female hand. And that is very important. And uh, by the same token, you've got to have the graphics, um, the colors, and uh, the type face, the meaning of font, and the size um, in a way that really attracts uh, the female customers because they are your uh, target market. Any inconsistencies uh, uh, here are going to cause this damage to the brand. The Totality of um, graphics and uh, all the packaging elements that have to create uh, an impression in the mind of uh, uh, the customers. That is the objective here. When you pay attention to uh, these um, the factors, you will uh, find out many inconsistencies. I repeat, inconsistencies in many brands. And why those inconsistencies exist, I leave it to your imagination. Uh, after having had this understanding, I think whenever you look at a brand, you're going to look very analytically. And uh, when you do that, you might find certain inconsistencies in so many different brands. And uh, you will also find consistencies among so many brands. And uh, then you will find out why those brands are so powerful and so valuable. The next strategy is uh, the, the pricing strategy, uh, which is uh, all about costs, competition, and uh, the overall market. Not to forget that uh, you also have to create an image, and uh, you must go for a price which is just about the right price uh, based on uh, the model which you have chosen. State uh, this um, strategy also in uh, the few words, and uh, then develop consistencies with the positioning and the overall marketing strategy. The next strategy is um, the distribution strategy. You have to decide uh, about um, the points of uh, the availability for your product. Where is it that your product must sell? And uh, in light of that, then you make uh, the decision about uh, your uh, channels. And uh, they mentioned that also uh, within um, a space of like you know two to three or at the most the four sentences uh, that talk about the cost effectiveness and talk about the, the outreach and the efficiency and so on and so forth and I'm sure you really can do that within a few sentences because when it comes to execution you are going to get into all the details and uh, the details to the level of uh, defining um, even uh, your uh, the margins you know the which you are going to offer uh, to the various members of the channel. So that, that uh, is going to be um, a, a part uh, the, a, which will be a reflection of not only your pricing strategy, but also distribution strategy. Anyway, I was um, diverging uh, you know, for a moment uh, from the, the main strategic uh, thought. Once uh, you have uh, all these strategies in place, uh, you get on to the next set of strategies, uh, which are all about communication. Naming strategy. State what name should connote what. Now, this is a strategy uh, which you must talk about uh, in terms of the meaning of the name. You must talk about the connotations, the impressions, or the, uh, the meanings which come to the mind of the consumers when um, the consumer thinks of the name or when the consumer hears the name because uh, that really is going to be the reflection of uh, the overall positioning of the brand. And that is why I said that I will tend to subscribe to the view that name of the brand should be uh, position-centric and uh, it should not be very vague and very general 
although there are so many names in the market which are very general and which are very powerful, but that is not to say that we must follow that practice. The next strategy is the, the copy strategy. This is a strategy which really relates uh, directly uh, with uh, the brand managers and therefore very important uh, for you guys. You could talk about uh, this strategy in uh, a little more detail in comparison with uh, the other strategies. The statement uh, has to be uh, concise, but nevertheless, it takes care of uh, the four different points. Number one is that uh, you must talk about the promise uh, the product carries. Uh, in other words, the benefit or the benefits uh, the product carries. Uh, number two, you must talk about uh, the support which makes the, the promise uh, deliverable. And uh, number three, you must talk about the, the emotional benefit or the emotional relationship which uh, the product uh, develops with uh, your customers. The meaning if uh, your product uh, makes your uh, customers feel very important, you've got to take that into account as uh, the part of the copy strategy. Uh, and number four point is, uh, which is the last point, um, you must uh, talk about the tone of uh, the advertising or the character uh, which uh, you really want built uh, of uh, your brand. So these are uh, the points that you have to consider uh, while talking about the copy strategy. And let us now uh, get on to the uh, next strategy, which is uh, the media strategy. This uh, basically states how you're going to reach your customers with uh, the message. So the statement of strategy is going to the center on uh, the message and uh, the importance of the combination of uh, the various uh, the tools that you have at your disposal, the meaning the media. Be very careful about the diversity and uh, the fragmentation of uh, today's media, especially in terms of uh, the television channels. Also, we talk about promotions and the strategy in terms of uh, trade promotions and uh, the consumer promotions. Uh, do not lose sight of uh, the objectives that you have uh, set to yourselves. The meaning uh, trial, the repeat purchase, uh, the whether original promotions or uh, the national promotions, uh, the need for uh, the stocking and on part of retailers, all these things have got to be taken into account. The next one uh, which you should uh, talk about is the, the merchandising strategy. Uh, which uh, must take the kind of uh, shelf space or display which you must achieve in relation to your brand. Uh, with this, uh, our um, communication uh, strategies uh, come to an end and uh, we have completed yet another part of the, the brand plan. The final part uh, deals with uh, a few um, very important strategies and, and the first one is the, the management strategy. What kind of management and um, organization, in other words, you must have in order to support the brand. And uh, I think the importance of that uh, was talked about in detail under uh, brand-based culture and organization. All you need to do is come up with a statement which sums up the whole thing uh, within a few sentences so that that does uh, that gives you a lead into the, what you're supposed to be looking into from that point of view. Another strategy that, uh, that you have to look into is the uh, resource strategy uh, from the point of view of uh, the advertising research and uh, the marketing research and uh, the other research models that, uh, that you may undertake from time to time. In particular, the uh, brand performance. Do not uh, forget that. You must talk about that as uh, one of the strategies and uh, the feedback uh, which you get from uh, uh, that strategy, meaning that by executing that strategy is going to form the basis of your future improvements and so on and so forth. What is uh, important uh, about uh, all these strategies is uh, what I can tell you as a conclusion of uh, this lecture and of the whole course is that uh, you may have uh, a different set of strategies, but the ones I've talked about uh, are the ones uh, which uh, will uh, be included in most of the, uh, the brand plans. You may keep all of them, and uh, you may not keep all of them. You may add a few more, or you may not add any more. The decision is yours, but what is important is that decision has to be taken on the basis of the consistencies of your objectives with the strategies. If you think a strategy has got to be added to the framework, you must add that. 
A few things that remain common under any sets of circumstances are that you have to have a long-term objective and you have to specify a target for the long term and you have to have means for achieving the objectives and strategies. That is the lesson of the whole course that I've talked about over 45 lectures in the hope that whatever I've talked about makes sense to you people and the brand plan which is the final final expression of the total effort that we all have undertaken is going to be useful. I wish you the best of luck in all the future endeavors that you may undertake. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.